Um, so this is the first of four videos um, talking about the auditory drill. Um, so the first part is going to be a description, you know, what is an auditory drill and kind of why are we doing this? Um, so first the description. An auditory drill is um, basically um, hearing a phoneme, so a sound, and then either identifying or making, writing the letter or letters that match that sound. Um, so it's going from a phoneme to a grapheme. Um, hence the auditory part, you're hearing it first. And um, although this is very short, like this should be maybe one to five minutes, this should not be your whole intervention lesson. Um, it is short, but it is very important. So we know that um, those individual connections between phonemes and graphemes are at the foundation of all reading and writing. So um, again, although this drill is very short, it's actually a really important one. Um, so it will most likely be part of an intervention lesson that you're doing. Um, all right, and it's also called other things. So we might call it an auditory drill, we could call it a what says drill, or you could call it a sound symbol drill. So just, <clears throat> you know, there are different names. Um, all right, so the next thing I wanna just show you is that in this video, as well as um, others you're gonna see, sorry, it's hard to like figure out the orientation. There we go. Um, I sometimes use this visual with the kids. Um, in this, so in this particular drill, the auditory drill, the kids are going to hear the, um, the teacher say a sound. So I might say, say, mmm. And then the students are gonna repeat it. They're going to say, mmm, back to me. So we're confirming that we, you know, we're working on the mmm. You know, I wanna make sure that they did hear that correctly. And then they're going to make it. And while they're making it, they're also seeing, of course, they're watching what they're doing and seeing um, that letter being formed. So it's, um, this visual just helps the kids to remember that um, using these different strategies will help us stay engaged and also help our brains to learn. So I, li I like to use this with the kids. All right, so let's go back to that example. So the teacher will say M, oh sorry, the teacher will say M mm, and um, the students repeat M mm, and then the teacher will ask what says M mm, and the students will say M says M mm, and they're going to make it. Um, on a dry erase board, they could be making it in sand, you know, they have a lot of different options for how you're making this, like the letter. All right, let's do another one, because it doesn't have to be an individual letter. So I could um, say, um, I could ask the students to say shh, and the students say shh, and I say what says shh, and the students will say and make, and they'll say sh says shh. Okay, so that's an example there. Um, another one, as the kids progress, there's going to be more than one grapheme for many of the phonemes. So I'll give you an example. Say E, and the students say E, and I say, what says E? And the students will say E, open, says E. E, consonant E, says E. Um, you can have E, E, says E. Um, you know, E, Y says E, you could have just Y say E, etc. So we would not hold the kids accountable for writing all of these graphemes unless they've been taught. So for example, if you have a kindergartner, you, you know, you're not going to be doing all of these. They might know the long E sound and that's it. Um, all right. So that's just kind of some examples of what that might look like. Um, so again, it doesn't have to be that the kids are making those letters using a dry eraser board. It could be something else. It could be sand. I like to keep my sand in like a little um, uh, Tupperware container. So there's that. Um, you could also use like a textured mat. You can find these at craft stores and cut them up. Really easy to get those. Um, I have gel mats I've used with the kids. Um, there are these old like handwriting without tears chalkboards. Um, so I've used those before. You could give the kids a Q-tip with water and they can make the letters on the chalkboard. Um, you could have them oh, use um, sky writing. So for example, with M, they would say M says M mm, and they would make the M using sky writing. Another option is a squeeze bottle. So they're squeezing to make the M and that is engaging the muscles in the arm. Um, what else? There's also, there are devices that you can buy that are actually kind of fun. Um, 
And so these are, are uh, you can find them on Amazon. They're not that much, maybe 15, I think. And they can use like a stylus and um, make the letter on the boards. So that's another option. And the last one is a paper version. So I have several, um, several different ones that I use depending on the level of the kids. So this might be a version that I use for kids who are just getting started. Um, you see like the boxes are pretty big, so they have plenty of room to form those letters. Um, I like to use a paper version. Here's another one because I want to have a written record maybe once a week so that I can I have a copy of their writing. Um, here's another version maybe for older kids. And you'll notice that there are other areas on this page as well. So this um, these are different things I might be using for uh, different parts of that intervention lesson. So it's kind of nice to have it on a single page. And again, I have those and can share them with everyone. Um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to go through. I think that's it. So that's kind of, you know, again, like the description of um, what that auditory drill is, kind of what it looks like and sort of why we're doing it. All right. So I will see you for part two.